Something that often shocks students is when they first see the size of this organ, which is the liver. Now this liver is actually a diseased liver, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. But the liver is the second largest organ in the human body, with the skin being the largest. And on top of being one of the largest organs in the body, you may have heard that the liver is quite resilient and has the capacity to regenerate. Surgeons have at times been able to remove more than three quarters of the liver, and within weeks to a few months, the remaining portion of the liver can often regrow back to its original size and perform its normal functions. But there are limitations to how much punishment the liver can take, and therefore limitations to its overall capacity for regeneration. And one disease that we're going to talk about today, fatty liver disease, is a disease that the liver can heal from, but it can also get bad enough to where someone's liver fails and they may need a complete transplant. And to make matters more concerning, more and more people are developing fatty liver disease. So today, we're gonna figure out what fatty liver disease is, what causes it, and why more people are getting fatty livers. And of course, how to fix it. It's going to be a hepatic one. So let's jump right into this anatomical awesomeness. Before we get into the details of fatty liver disease, Let's take a second to appreciate everything the liver does right. The liver is an absolute workhorse, performing multiple essential functions to keep you alive. It filters toxins from the blood, metabolizes drugs, and produces bile to help digest fats. The liver also plays a huge role in metabolism, specifically the metabolism of the macronutrients, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. It makes your HDLs and your LDLs, stores essential nutrients like glycogen, which is the storage form of glucose, and also stores iron and vitamins A, B, D, E, and K. It is a key player in regulating blood glucose levels and even produces proteins that are essential for immune function and clotting the blood. In short, your liver is pretty much the most unselfish organ of your body, quietly running a 24-7 detox and metabolic processing facility until fatty buildup starts to throw a wrench in the program. Now there is alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is caused by excessive consumption of alcohol, which I'm guessing is not much of a surprise to you. But what we are mostly focusing on here is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is what this particular body had. Not the cause of death, that was lung cancer, but non-alcoholic fatty liver disease was one of the comorbidities or one of the many conditions that this person had. Now we know that this body had fatty liver because we did get part of the medical history and this individual was diagnosed with it prior to death but there are also some indicators just by looking at this body. One indicator is that the liver is enlarged, and this is due to the infiltration of fat into the liver. Literally, fat gets inside the liver cells, and this is referred to as hepatic steatosis. Hepatic means liver, and steat refers to fat, with osis meaning abnormal condition. But as these liver cells accumulate more and more fat, they can start to swell or balloon. And the liver can also sometimes swell and enlarge due to the liver becoming inflamed. But inflammation typically happens during the later stages of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And I should mention that not everyone will present with an enlarged liver, as enlargement is more typical of someone that catches the disease a little bit later on. And we'll talk about how this disease is often caught and diagnosed in just a few minutes. But another indicator of fatty liver disease in this particular body is the sheer amount of visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat that surrounds the organs, and this body is in the category of obesity and has a very high amount of visceral fat. So based on what we've seen with this body, you're probably starting to get some ideas of what the causes or risk factors are for developing fatty liver disease. And the new name for this disease is actually going to give us some extra help with this. Up to this point, we've been calling it non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but recently, the name was changed to reflect the strong correlation that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has with cardiometabolic dysfunction. And the new name, if you're ready for it, is Metabolic Dysfunction Associated Steatotic Liver Disease, or MASLD, or sometimes people even just say MASLD. Now, I know that name is a mouthful, but let's just break it down to see what the name's actually trying to tell us. We already know that steatotic is referring to an abnormal accumulation of fat. And so all this name is saying is that we pretty much are getting steatotic liver disease due to certain metabolic dysfunctions, and a little bit more accurately, cardiometabolic dysfunctions. 
These cardiometabolic dysfunctions include being overweight, having insulin resistance or being pre-diabetic or diabetic, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, abnormal triglycerides and or abnormalities in cholesterol levels. And so having any one of those or a combination will increase your risk and may lead to the development of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, AKA metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. But this is actually part of how this condition is diagnosed. For someone to be diagnosed with metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, it needs to be confirmed with imaging, meaning the imaging has to show that the liver has been infiltrated with fat. This is most often done with an ultrasound, but sometimes people will find it as an incidental finding, like if they had a CT or an MRI of their abdomen for something else, and this was just an incidental finding. But imaging is only one part of the diagnostic criteria. The person also has to check one or more of the boxes for those cardiometabolic dysfunctions. And again, this can either be a BMI over 25, pre-diabetic or diabetic, hypertension, elevated triglycerides, and or too low of HDL cholesterol. Now, there are some extra details to that diagnostic criteria. So for those of you aspiring to be nicer versions of HouseMD, I'll include those extras in the description. But one last thing I wanna mention. Most of the time, people have no idea that they have developed metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, as it is often asymptomatic, especially in the early stages. And so many times people will catch it during their annual physicals when they get their blood drawn. And if the patient's liver enzymes are elevated with no other reason to account for the elevation, plus the person has one or more of those cardiometabolic dysfunctions, then the primary care provider may order an ultrasound to confirm whether or not the person has this condition. But because of everything that you've learned so far about this condition, you probably have a pretty good idea on some of the treatment strategies. In general, we could say, do everything that you can to control and improve those cardiometabolic dysfunctions. And so for everyone that is diagnosed with metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, they will be prescribed a weight loss plan. And this can have some of the most far reaching effects because weight loss can also affect the other cardiometabolic dysfunctions. Weight loss improves blood pressure. It improves insulin sensitivity, which would help with prediabetes and even diabetes. And it can improve triglycerides and cholesterol levels. Now, obviously losing a lot of weight can be easier said than done, but losing weight would include a combination of diet as well as exercise. And if you're interested, we do have our cardiovascular exercise training protocol chart as a free link down in the description. Weight loss treatment can get even more aggressive if people are having a hard time losing the weight with diet and exercise alone, meaning this could start to include things like weight loss drugs. You've probably heard of semaglutide, which is Ozempic, which we do have a video coming out soon explaining what we really think about that medication, but it could potentially be used in this situation, as well as something like bariatric surgery. And these more aggressive treatment strategies, like the Ozempic, like the bariatric surgery, become an even stronger consideration if someone is starting to move toward a more severe version of metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. And I'll mention the progression of the disease in just a second but I do want to quickly mention two other components for the treatment of this condition. One is avoiding alcohol. Even though this condition is not caused by alcohol, we don't want to give the liver anything extra to deal with, especially since alcohol is toxic to the liver. Vaccinations for hepatitis A and hepatitis B are also recommended for all people with this condition. That is if they haven't already been vaccinated. And this is kind of the same idea with alcohol. You don't want these viruses giving the liver anything extra to deal with. But let's finish up with what happens if this disease gets worse. If metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease progresses, it will usually first progress to what's known as metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis. The steatohepatitis part is saying that the accumulation of fat is now leading to inflammation of the liver. This can then start to lead to fibrosis, which is scarring of the liver, and can even eventually lead to cirrhosis, which is essentially full-blown widespread scarring of the liver. And now you're knocking on the door of a much higher increased risk of things like liver cancer and even potentially talking about liver transplants. So clearly we want to prevent this level of liver injury from actually occurring. Because yes, the liver does have an incredible ability to regenerate, but there is a point of no return, especially with enough widespread inflammation and scarring throughout the liver. Now on one hand, this might sound a little bit scary. However, if you are keeping up on your annual physicals, getting your blood drawn, and you have a good primary care provider, this is something that you should be able to screen for and pick up on in the early stages and intervene if necessary. 
However, the ideal situation is to start now with your health and do your best to prevent any chronic health conditions from taking hold in the first place. And I always start with the big four with my patients, proper diet, exercise, sleep, and maintaining your mental health. If you can get a handle on those four aspects of your life, you will likely be in a very good place with your health. One of my hopes with every single one of our videos is that they inspire you to be a lifelong learner. And if you take the time to just learn a little bit every day, gradually over days, weeks, months, and years, you will have accumulated an incredible amount of knowledge. And this is why we continue to partner with Brilliant as the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant helps you to accomplish the task of getting smarter every day. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. Brilliant's lessons are designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up, creating a strong learning foundation that you can build upon. Each lesson is hands-on and interactive, letting you play with and explore concepts, helping you build critical thinking and application skills through problem solving and not just blind memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker. And it's probably not going to be too shocking that the science nerd in me is going to geek out about brilliant science courses, as these courses help you make sense of our universe at every level, from the mechanics of simple machines, all the way up to the mind-bending physics of black holes. So if you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org IHA or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And thank you for watching today's video, everyone. We'd love for you to be likers and subscribers of our channel, so go ahead and engage the appropriate skeletal muscles in order to accomplish the applicable clicking. And we'll see you soon.